This chip holds the secret to the world's most influential technology in the digital era, a minuscule, intricately designed microchip that is powering all the tech that humans have become so reliant on, from cell phones, fridges, computers, cars, and all the way to jet planes. And this is the machine that makes it. The technology used in these machines is so advanced that even countries known for their technological prowess have been unable to replicate it. And you might be surprised to learn that it's not Intel, Samsung, or even TSMC that holds the key to this powerful piece of technology. It's ASML, a company that you probably haven't heard of before. But to fully understand how this Dutch company got the world under its feet, it's important that you know how they got started. Let's go! The humble beginnings of ASML are something that many people don't know about, because in 1984, the Dutch companies Philips and ASMI collaborated to create this company. But because the advanced technologies, research, and raw materials for what they were building cost so much, they didn't have enough resources to get a new factory for ASML. At first, the new company was stationed in a leaky shed, but they still persevered and launched their first ever machine. The first machines they built were a hit, because Philips and ASMI realized their potential and scaled their investments to help ASML do more. Not only did it lead them to a better facility, but it also provided more funding for more research and raw materials. This investment has more room to let their engineers run on developing ways to produce a more advanced and precise machine that could print these tiny designs onto chips. And once again, ASML succeeded. In 1988, ASML's growth was unstoppable. The company established the business collaboration in Taiwan and grew its US office to five locations while maintaining an international presence with offices across Europe. But despite their fast growth, this wasn't a journey without hiccups. The market then was saturated with competitors and suppliers, and ASML only had a few customers to keep their books afloat. Even worse, ASMI, one of its significant shareholders, couldn't keep up with high investments with little return. In short, they were becoming bankrupt. ASMI then withdrew, leaving all the responsibility to Philips. On the other hand though, Philips wasn't in good financial shape either. The company had to cut costs, leaving ASML with almost nothing to operate on. But because ASML believed that their innovative systems would become a breakthrough, ASML executives pleaded with Philips to give them a final investment. Fortunately, ASML successfully persuaded Philips and they reinvested in ASML, and their gamble paid off when ASML launched a breakthrough platform that raked in lots of premium customers and gave them all vast profits. The company then grew in dominance, and even more so in 1995, when ASML became a fully independent public company listed on the Amsterdam and New York stock exchanges. ASML's growth became unstoppable when Philips slowly sold its shares. And as you can imagine, a lot has happened since 1995, and around 2010, their prototype of the current most advanced machine was shipped to an Asian chip maker who started their dominance across Asia. At that time, this was the world's most modern tool to draw minuscule structures that make up a chip. Honestly though, even if you have a microchip at hand, you won't even notice all the layers of intricacies it holds because they are too small for the naked eye to see. From 2010 up until now, ASML machines have been sought after by the whole world. Every year or two, they build better and more high-end versions than the last ones, and surely the world's top chip-making companies can't relax. Anybody who can afford ASML's products is at their doorstep, trying to get the most recent version, even if it costs a lot. I mean, who could relax when there's only one company that can make such advancements in the chip-making process, right? And while ASML is trying to supply every paying client with the most desired machines, they just can't. Each one is so unique, complex, and complicated, building at a faster production is an ambitious concept just yet. But to really understand the massive success of ASML, let's dive into their machines and see what sets them apart from their competitors. Earlier in this video, I showed you a microchip and the machine that makes it, and this machine is otherwise known as a lithography machine, which in simple terms works like a printer for chips, but instead of ink and paper, it uses light and photoresistant materials like silicon wafers to create patterns on chips. And while both silicon and wafers taste differently on their own, turns out that they're not that good of a snack. 
or so I've heard. Anyways, this is a silicon wafer, and basically the silicon wafer is the paper on which patterns of billions of transistors are built layer by layer. And it's not that lithography machines are unique to ASML. What sets ASML apart from its competitors is its use of this light called EUV, more commonly available in outer space, to print billions of miniature transistors onto chips. ASML engineered a way to gather this type of light and use it to their advantage, which other companies have yet to do. The transistors that ASML are making are microscopic, and they're measured in nanoscale. And to help you picture this, each transistor is 8,000 times smaller than a strand of hair. Impressive, right? And today, the smallest structure for most advanced chips is 10 nanometers. But using the EUV technology, ASML can pull this down to 1 nanometer come 2030. Now, you might be wondering why ASML is pushing for this ambitious feat. Well, the answer is pretty obvious. Needless to say, the more transistors that are packed into a chip, the faster a chip will function. In other words, the more advanced your chips are, the more advanced your devices are. Just think back to a simpler time. Like, do you remember what the first computer looks like? Or the granddaddy of all desktop computers? How about the first ever cell phone, also known as the shoe phone, that weighed two and a half pounds? Yes, this one. This is why ASML exists in the first place, to improve our technology. ASML's development over time allowed for smaller devices with greater capacity, which led us from bulky TVs and refrigerators on our kitchen counters down to tiny smartphones. Now that we've talked about ASML's unique machines and how they work, it's also important to know how these machines are actually built. Each machine is a complex, most complicated piece of art, but the studios where these pieces are put together are even more impressive. These machines are actually built in clean rooms, which is exactly as stated. It's a controlled environment where pollutants like dust and dirt are filtered out to provide the most pristine area possible. And clean rooms work in two ways. One, to protect the product being manufactured from failure due to contamination. And two, it offers a safer environment for workers to perform tasks in semiconductor clean rooms, which involves handling toxic materials and highly sensitive processes. So, from the actual research, to the gathering of raw materials, to the experts who work on each model, up to the final product, everything involved in making this machine and the actual device might look very expensive. Well, yeah, yeah it is. Each machine could easily cost you a measly 150 million to 200 million dollars. That's not so bad. With components acquired from nearly 5,000 suppliers. Shipping a single machine will take 40 shipping containers, 20 trucks, and not only one, not two, but three Boeing 747s. No wonder only a few chip making companies could ever afford it, including TSMC, Intel, and Samsung. But here's an important question that you might have already wondered yourself. So if these giant chip making companies know how these lithography machines work, then why can't they make them themselves? Well, the thing is, ASML proved to make the impossible possible when it comes to chip making machines. And the real deal to how they did this is to this day still their company's top secret. The machines they built cannot be easily copied. But if you don't take our word for it, then Skip Miller, the vice president of investor relations of ASML, said these lithography machines are the most complicated devices ever made, and it's probably true. But if you still don't believe us and have such awful trust issues, then let me tell you this crazy story. So word has it is that China bought an ASML machine to understand how it's made. They built a research team of engineers and scientists, and the crew disassembled this ASML machine and tried to replicate the tech inside of it. But still, years later, China is nowhere near to finding out how this genius of a machine is built. And to make it worse, it's said that they weren't even able to put it back together. So ASML is the only company that could possibly build these highly advanced machines responsible for producing ultra-fast and ultra-tiny microchips. And as exciting of a story as it might be, the whole world isn't as happy with their dependence on ASML. So let me tell you more about this in the next chapter. It's no secret that ASML's technology has enormous impact on the world. Just imagine every piece of tech equipment at home running on a microchip that ASML created. From cell phones, laptops, ACs, and basically everything in your home can be powered by ASML. But let's think on a larger scale. Manufacturing companies, pharmaceuticals, the healthcare industry, and even the military, every piece of equipment they use, the tech in it is born from a chip printed by lithography machines made by ASML. 
ASML. Right now, ASML has a monopoly on manufacturing these machines. I mean, they're really the only ones who can build these EUV lithography machines from the ground up, and surrounding powerful countries aren't as happy with this fact. ASML is actually sitting on a large conflict ready to erupt at any time, with countries at their doorstep vying for the most advanced tech they have ever developed, to these countries trying to replicate how these machines are built, and the same ones trying to stop others from getting the latest machines ASML has currently constructed, it's really a worldwide tech riot. Countries have a massive demand for this kind of technology and try to replicate it themselves, trying to outrun competitors in terms of more powerful tech. Just imagine being an ultra-powerful country but almost 100% dependent on a single company most people haven't even heard of. I'd feel defeated and really, really frustrated. And this must be how the US, China, and the rest of the most powerful countries feel. In this technological era, every nation wants to be self-sufficient in all aspects. But what's even better is to become an industry leader, especially in chip making. But because ASML has a monopoly on advanced lithography, the world cannot help but depend depend on them. And since the world is entirely dependent on ASML for its enormous demands, it's having difficulty keeping up with all the orders. And it might seem like an inconsequential problem, but it has dramatic consequences for countries dependent on ASML's machines, because the economic growth of these countries will decline. But until one of them cracks the code, they have no choice but to rely on ASML for sustenance. But the most significant takeaway in this video is captured in this quote by Krishnamurti. The greats have achieved it by starting small. Well, now you know who ASML is and how it started from a leaky shed to world domination. It's crazy how they became so significant in the world in such a short amount of time with their state-of-the-art lithography machines. But everything is possible if you know that your product is actually a breakthrough and the best. But is it actually good that ASML is almost the only company that can produce these high-end machines? Or should they give their secret recipe to other companies so there's no imbalance and monopoly? Let me know in the comments below. Want to see more inspiring videos like this one? Then make sure to hit that subscribe button. For now though, I will see you guys in the next one.